All right, all righty. So um, I wanna go live today. I hope life is treating you great. I hope things are lovely where you're at. Um, what did I wanna go live about? Well, clearly the name of this video is my three favorite places in Israel to visit. And today it is uh, July in 2020, but I'll tell you, these three places are very, very old. And um, you might be guessing what some of them are, but ultimately I'm gonna go into the three favorite places for me to visit uh, living in Israel. As you guys know, or may or may not know, uh, my name's Claude Massey. I am a professional career consultant and sales trainer living in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm originally from Los Angeles. I moved to Israel, man about uh, 13 years ago. And um, let's dive into the video for today. I'll talk about probably some things other than my favorite places. Since I am going live, um, I tend to uh, cover a lot of information about how I feel about Israel, what's going on in Israel, and uh, whether you, as a person who's probably considering to visit Israel eventually or move here eventually, you might be able to enjoy this. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button at the beginning of the video, just go ahead and do it. And um, let's go into it. So my favorite place, oh, by the way, um, there's over 200 other videos on this channel <laughs> that all cover uh, various aspects of life as well as uh, moving to Israel and living in Israel. So it might be worth it for you to subscribe. That being said, my number one spot, or you know what? I'm just going to start with number one. I won't say I have a favorite because um, I really have three. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And the first of these three favorite places is a beach. Not surprising at all. All of you know Israel is located on the Mediterranean Sea. And my favorite beach in Israel dun, da, 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 is called Aqueduct Beach. It's in Caesarea, which is uh, just north of Tel Aviv. And uh, it's probably about an hour drive north of Tel Aviv. Uh, if you do know the cities in Israel, then it's just north of uh, Herzliya and Kafar Sabah. And then right past that is Caesarea. Now, why do I like Aqueduct Beach, Aqueduct Beach in Caesarea? Well, a lot of the beaches, you know, I, you guys know I'm in Tel Aviv. So the beaches in Tel Aviv are super close to where I'm at. I can always get there very quickly. It's very nice, very convenient. However, it is very crowded and can be sort of a loud experience with people playing paddle ball or what's called matkot and bringing the radios to the beach and just having fun, you know, young people hitting the beach. But there, you know, because there's uh, not that much shoreline in Tel Aviv, the beaches in Tel Aviv are really busy. And for me, when I like to go to the beach, I'm not sure about you guys, maybe you wanna go to the beach and have a few beers and, and get crazy and approach the opposite sex and try to meet other people, that's cool. No hatred coming from me. You know, I'm, I'm almost 40, so um, I was in my 20s too. But for me, I, I enjoy going to the beach when it's nice and quiet. The water's crystal clear. The scenery is beautiful. And for me, I have not met a beach in Israel that parallels with the magnificence of Aqueduct Beach. And uh, if, you're, if you're ever going to visit Israel, I recommend you go you move here, it'll probably become one of your favorite beaches as well. Um, it doesn't matter if you move here from the USA or if you move here from any part of the world, it's just a beautiful beach. Um, I don't know how it compares to the beaches in Thailand or uh, Hawaii. I haven't been to any one of those, but I, I have a good feeling. Anyway, um, that's spot number one. And I could make the highest of recommendations just type it in on Google. There's a beautiful pancake spot. You can, if you're coming from Tel Aviv, going up to Caesarea, stop at the pancake house, 
have some breakfast, make a day of it. Simply beautiful. Yes, there's lifeguards. Yes, there's shade for you to enjoy. And um, man, right now, as of the last time I went, which was um, not too long ago, probably, uh, just, just beautiful, crystal clear water. Go for it and enjoy the weather and go have a great time. That is the first recommendation for all of you to go check out this beach, uh, Aqueduct Beach in Caesarea. Beautiful. That's my, uh, one of my favorite spots in Israel. Going forward into the second spot, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, this is a coronavirus time. How can, you know, how can I uh, even use this information? I suppose because global travel is drastically reduced, because a lot of you guys watching my videos, I've learned are located um, in Israel, actually, and if you're not traveling globally, I thought I would make a recommendation for you uh, to be able to travel locally, right? So that's uh, how I have the audacity to make this video about these awesome spots uh, in Israel. And I recommend for all of you to visit them once again. Spot number two, pretty classic. My second favorite place to visit in Israel is the old city of Jerusalem. Now, this is something that, I don't know, a lot of people I've noticed over the last 12 years here, they, uh, if they are not religious, and I'm not religious, um, matter of factly, I am, uh, I've read the Torah and the Tanakh and the Quran and the New Testament and the Book of Mormon. I've read all of them, word by word, multiple times. So uh, that's my perspective on religion as far as the old city of Jerusalem is concerned. But <laughs> don't be mistaken, the old city of Jerusalem is actually the focal point for the Jewish religion, the Christian religion, and the Muslim religion. So it's a very religious place. Um, and I'm fascinated by religion, but energetically is where my, my love for this, this place comes from, the old city of Jerusalem has massive quantities of energy, ancient energy, because if you do the search on Google, I want to say the old city of Jerusalem, it should be one of the top three oldest living cities in the world. Meaning the city has been there, and people have lived in it for a long, long, long time. And because of this, can you, can you picture thousands and thousands of years? I think Jerusalem uh, goes easily, go, easily goes back 6,000 years. So the amount of energy, the love that's existed in the city. The, uh, now, the, the old city is, is actually just a, a one square mile you know, of, of land, the old city. And I guess it's in the middle. And then surrounding it is the new version of Jerusalem. But the old city is what I'm talking about, right in the center there. And uh, it's still walled. It has the ancient walls up around it. It has uh, the Dome of the Rock. If you just type in the Jerusalem online, you'll see the Dome of the Rock. You'll see the Western Wall. You'll see the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, these are those very powerful spiritual locations. Um, but for me, remember the energy, the small streets, the, the food the smells, all of these things are why I really, really, really enjoy going to the old city of Jerusalem. Um, but however, for now, excuse me, for now, um, I'm going to actually recommend to take a little bit of time before you go because it is crowded because of social distancing and the state of our world today. Uh, I do want to throw like a slight uh, caution about understanding how close everything is in the old city, how close people are. It's not the buildings, it's the people, I guess. And um, you, you may want to consider that before you actually, you know, take the trip to the old city. But I mean, that's just today. And I don't know what next week has in store. And certainly the last time I was there and uh, 
it's not going anywhere, this old city. It's going to be beautiful for a while. It's going to be filled with powerful energy for a long, long time. And I highly recommend for you to go make a day trip out of it. Let's see here. Make sure everything's fine. Had like a message come up. Perfect. We're still on. All right. So uh, that's the second spot. Check out Jerusalem. Third spot, my third favorite place to visit in Israel is not that far from the old city of Jerusalem. It's about a probably like an hour drive from there is uh, the Dead Sea. Now, the Dead Sea, as you guys know, is the lowest place in the world. Um, the Dead Sea is a body of water where nothing can sink, really. Uh, people don't sink in the Dead Sea. You float automatically because of the extreme high salt uh, levels in the water. Either way, I'm not going to be scientific about it. I'm going to tell you that I love going to the Dead Sea because it is very, very beautiful, very relaxing. And I feel comfortable making a recommendation to do it, to go visit the Dead Sea and go into the desert. It's in the middle of the desert. It's a huge body of water in the middle of the desert. Don't drink the water, it's super salty, but go and float. Get some of the, the very, very famous Dead Sea oils and minerals all over your body. And tell me it's not relaxing for you. I guarantee you'll have a great time doing it. Every time I've been there, um, it's about a two hour drive from uh, maybe like a two and a half hour drive from Tel Aviv to arrive to the shore of the Dead Sea. Uh, but every time I go, I have the best time and uh, there's hotels right on the shore there along the different parts of the Dead Sea. And I recommend for you to go as soon as possible. Yes. That being said, I just wanted to do a quick live video about these three of my favorite places for you to recommend or for me to recommend for you to visit and to go and have a great time. Um, Caesarea the old city of Jerusalem and the Dead Sea. Those are my recommendations. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button and take care.